This program is made possible by the friends and partners of Unspeakable Joy TV. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Tonight, and the Lord willing, next Sunday morning and night, I've got this, this thought of the Laodicean church on my mind. Tonight, I'm looking at prophets unto Laodicea. The book of the Revelation tonight, chapter number 3 and verse number 14, the Bible says this, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now, brothers and sisters, tonight we are in the book of Revelation, the writing of John, given to him under inspiration of the Holy Ghost to give to the people the end of all days. You have here the climactic end of the church age. You have here the climactic a or the climactic end of the government age, and you have here the climactic end of the earth's age. Now, inside of men's hearts, I can't explain this. I cannot describe this. I'm just telling you it's the way that it is. There is something churning in the minds and the hearts of humanity that tells us we are almost at the end of something. We cannot describe that other than to say it feels like we are all headed to an end and it feels like we are getting there quickly. I cannot explain to you why it feels like it feels to say that we are headed to the last days and we are in the last days. I can't explain it. I'm just telling you that's the way that it is. Now, when you come to the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, we are dealing with the seven churches of Asia Minor. These seven churches are literal churches. They peppered the landscape of Asia Minor and they are written to by Jesus. Jesus, but they are also prophetic churches. They serve as the timeline of what the church is going to look like. Now, as we come to the last church, the church at Laodicea, you are coming to the end of the church age. What the church at Laodicea looked like there is what the last day's church is going to look like today. And I don't know how to explain it any other way than to say it. We are living in the last days, church. We are living in that great falling away. We are living in that time when men would do right, know to do right, love Christ, but yet they go back to that way and they abandon the ways of Christ. Now listen to me tonight. I'm not talking about people that mess up. We all mess up. I'm talking about people that mess up, know they mess up, and don't care that they've messed up, and head back into the world. We call that the great following. My heart was shattered this afternoon. You ever had a moment when you look at social media and your world and your mind get shook? OTCG got shook. 
this afternoon. I've got a preacher friend down in this area. And this preacher friend, I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't notice it. But he had a son that was called to preach. This son was working in the ministry. Hadn't paid attention to the boy. Hadn't paid attention to anything about him. But this young man has come out now on social media and he is now claiming to be a homosexual. And yet that that blows my mind. But it gets worse than that. He is saying now that he's transitioning into a woman. Now that blows my mind. But the story got worse. He's not only transitioning to become a woman. He is marrying a woman that is transitioning to become a man. Now I'm looking at this and I'm saying I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. But here we are dealing with a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ that at one time lifted up the bloodstained banner, lifted up the things of God. But yet today he says there is no God. We are living in that day of the great falling away. I can't explain it. And I'm telling you right now, beloved, we're going to have to be like old John the Beloved where he stands up and says, I am going to be a prophet unto the Laodicean church. Beloved, I remind you tonight, it's going to take people that are swimming against the river. It's going to take people that are going against the flow. It's not going to be an everyday occurrence that you have a church like this right here. I've often wondered, God, why do you have us here at this church? Why do am I at this church? I cannot help but wonder if it is not the fact that I go out into this world week by week and I go to dried up church after dried up church and yet God lets me come back to this little oasis. Let me just stop and park my ten and a half right here on this stage and say they ain't nobody in this world that's as thankful to God for this house of worship as I am thankful for this house of worship. But here's what I'm telling you. We're going to have to have men and women that are prophets unto the Laodicean church age. If you're going to swim against the flow and if you're going to go against the grain, you're going to have to know three things. Number one, you're going to have to know you are going to stand alone. You're not going to have people that are with you. You're not going to be in the majority. You're not going to have a lot of people that are applauding you. You're not going to have a lot of people that say, yeah, that's exactly the way church is supposed to be. You're going to have a lot of people that will say something like this. They're going to say, you're outdated. You're dried up. You need to get out of the way. You're stopping the flow. This is not the way the modern man is. Honey, if that out there is what the modern man looks like, I don't want to be like the modern man. I want to be a prophet. I want to be a man that's got Holy Ghost inside of my soul, got fire inside of my bosom, got leather inside of my lungs, and stands up in this Laodicean church age and says, this is not right. But you got to know, beloved, you're going to stand by yourself at work. You're going to stand by yourself in your family. You're going to stand by yourself at your job. You're going to stand by yourself everywhere you go. But here's what you need to understand. When nobody else is standing with you, you are not standing by yourself. Even though you cannot see it, you got the big three with you. You got God the Father, God the Son, and God the sweet Holy Ghost. But there's not going to be men that stand with you. Number two, if you're going to be a prophet at Laodicea, you've got to understand you're going to be misunderstood by the brethren. Honey, I have been called every name under God's green earth. I've been called a holiness preacher. I've been called an emotionalist. I've been called somebody that is behind the times. I've been called a dinosaur. I've been called a hair. Now listen, that's from the people that think I'm too emotional. Then I got people on this side over here that think I'm too dried up. Can I explain something to you? If you think I'm dried up, I don't even want to go to your church because electricity would shock you when you get in the parking lot. (laughs) People in your family, they're going to call you names. They're going to say you've lost your mind. They're going to say you don't know what you're talking about. 
They're going to say, you're all messed up. You're going to be misunderstood. Man, I've got people right now, and I talk to you like this because I believe I can be honest with you. There are people right now, and they say the reason that our church puts TV programs out and the reason I have unspeakable joy is we're wanting to get rich. Can I tell you something? If I was a wanting to get rich, I would not have had a budget when I bought a house. I would not be driving a Toyota Sequoia with 125,000 miles on it. If I had that lane money, son, I'd have whatever I wanted. You know what I'm saying. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to have people in your family when they say, why don't we do this? No, we don't do that. What do you mean you don't do that? Don't you know what age it is? Don't you know... No, it's Friday night. Where are you going? I'm going to church. What do you mean you're going to church? It's Friday night. It's Sunday night. All rednecks need to be doing one of two things. Either getting ready for NASCAR or for WWE tomorrow night, one of the two. What do you mean you're going to church? You're going to be misunderstood. But here's the point. The reason you're misunderstood is because you're headed in a direction that they're not headed in. Number three, the third thing you need to understand, you're going to be a target of the devil. The devil despises everything about what you're trying to do. The devil despises everything about what you're trying to stand for. The devil despises everything about what you're trying to build yourself up to. The devil despises every time you get on your knees. The devil despises every time you have a dream. The devil despises every time God gives you a vision. The devil despises every time you bow on your knees with your family. The devil despises every time you stand in a choir. The devil despises when we have a service like we had this morning. The devil despises when you lift up your hands in the sanctuary. The devil despises when you say, I'm not staying down. I'm headed on with Jesus. The devil despises when we talk about buying this, when we talk about doing that, when we talk about helping this, when we talk about growing that, when we talk about helping young people, when we talk about blessing this, when we talk about helping over there, when we talk about all, the devil despises it. And because the devil doesn't have a lot of targets, the targets he does have are going to be dealt with in big ways. I say this all the time, and I'm telling you right now, you do understand those people in this church, you say, I'm not as big a Christian as my forefathers. Can I tell you something? Your forefathers didn't deal with the oppression you deal with. The, your forefathers had no idea the depression and the discouragement and the anxiety and the overwhelming feelings. Lane, our forefathers had no idea what it meant to have to go through government regulations. Our forefathers, Austin, had no idea what it meant to have to worry about building this and, and that over there. They had no idea what in it. Yeah, you saw, I know they dealt with all this, but they didn't have to deal with the mind games. They didn't have to deal with the bully attacks. They didn't have to deal with all that the devil is throwing the day and you're dealing right now with more demons and more devils than any of your ancestors have ever dealt with but I remind some child of God tonight that the Bible still says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world you can make it you can stand you can go you can grow you can glow and you can show that Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life but you're gonna have to know you're going to be attacked by the devil. I was just writing that outline in my head. You got to know, you got to show, you got to grow, and you got to glow. Somebody write that down. I'm preaching that next Sunday. <laughs> now listen to me. It's going to take prophets in Laodicea. You say, what is the message of a prophet in Laodicea? What is it that you, as the people of God, are going to have to stand for? I'll give you three things that the prophets in Laodicea will preach. Number one, the first thing that the prophets in Laodicea are going to have to understand, they're going to have to refuse to stay down. Prophets in Laodicea are going to have to refuse to stay down. You say, where do you get that? Well, let me give you a little Bible lesson right quick. You say, in Revelation chapter number 3, do you see a pastor's name anywhere in chapter 3 from 14 down to 19? No. You know why? We don't know who the pastor was. But we do know who used to pastor 
the church at Laodicea. Let me put some verses up on the screen for you in Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 12 and 13. The Bible says this, Paul's writing, and he says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, laboring fervently for you in prayers. Now let's look at verse 13. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and for them that are in Laodicea. You see, Epaphras was the name of the pastor in the church at Laodicea in the days of the Apostle Paul. Now, he had died because Paul wrote Colossians chapter 4 30 years before Revelation chapter 3. Epaphras has passed off, has passed off the scene. But whoever the new pastor was, what like Epaphras? So then what was Epaphras like if we're going to see what the new pastor was not like? Do you know what Epaphras, his name, literally means? The name Epaphras, it literally means very foamy, frothy. Now, I know some of you right now are saying, what does that have to do with staying up for God? Well, I didn't know either, but I was on my couch in my mother-in-law's living room and the Holy Ghost said this. He said, start thinking. Man, I got to think at Austin. I got to processing that in my mind. I got to going in my heart. I got to moving in my mind. Got to thinking about what is foam? What is froth? Do you know what foam and froth are? Foam and froth are the end result when air and water meet. Whenever there is a violent reaction between air and water, foam will form. Foam forms in mainly two places. You see it in a dog's mouth. You know where else you see foam? On the waves of the sea. Do you know how the foam forms on the waves of the sea? I'll tell you how the foam forms on the waves of the sea. Whenever the waves come a-crashing down, they'll crash and they get air pockets trapped beneath those waves. And what it forms is that violent reaction of that water mixing with those air pockets. That's those air pockets. They form foam and they shoot up to the surface. Here's the point. Now, Stay with me because I got a wild imagination. I imagine that little air pocket is out there on that sea and it's just gliding along. And before it know it, some big old wave tries to take it under. Some big old wave tries to take it down. Some big old adverse situation tries to overcome it. Some big old wave tries to keep it under and it crashes on top of that air bubble. And honey, that air bubble gets down, but it starts fighting. Oh God, it's starting. Starts wailing. Oh God, it starts warring under that water. And you know what it says? It says, I'm made to be up on the surface. I'm not made to stay down beneath the water. I'm not made to stay down below the surface. And that air bubble, it gets to fighting and it creates this foam and it creates this froth and it hits the surface. And you know what that foam is up there? It's a testimony. Oh God, it's a testimony. I was underwater, but I fought and I got back up the top. I made it up top again. I remind you tonight you know what it's going to take in this layout of seeing church age? The devil's going to do everything in his power to keep you down. He's going to do everything in his power to keep you under. He's going to do everything in his power to make you go down. But that saint of God that's got that fight on the inside of him that says I may be down but I'm not staying down. I may have messed up but I'm not a messed up. I may have gone down. Oh but I got that fight. I got that fire. I got that glory on the inside of my soul. I refuse to stay down. That divorce, it took you down. But that fight, 
is a bringing you up. That bankruptcy, it brought you down. But that fight is making you get back up. That death, it brought you down. But that fight is making you get back up. That, that season of depression, it brought to bring you down. But that fight is a making you get back up. You know why the devil has tried to take you under? He knows what God has raised you up to be, a prophet in Laodicea. That's why the waves are coming over you. That's why the storms are overflowing you. That's why the adversity is trying to wreck your life. But the devil knows that there's power on the inside and there's glory on the inside and there's hope on the inside. I'm telling some child of God tonight, get back up, get back up, get back up, get back up. There's fight in you. There's power in you. There's anointing in you. There's glory in you. Don't let the devil keep you down. Be like Epaphras and get foamy on God and get back up and carry on again. But the new pastor, he wasn't like that. The new pastor just said, you know what? Times are different. The new pastor said, I guess we're just not in the same world we've been in. And man, those waves, they overflow him. And you know what he does? He just rolls with the tide. He just rolls with the tide. He just goes with it. Can I tell you what I'm tired of? I'm not tired of Christians that mess up. We all mess up. I'm tired of Christians that when they mess up, they stay down. Where's the fight in the people of God? Where's the fire in the people of God? Where's the sight of a bloody Christ in our eyes? Where's the sight of an empty tomb in our soul? Where's the fight on the inside of us? You say, I'm dealing with too much. Honey, we're all dealing with too much, but there ain't a single one of us that dealt with near as much as the Lord Jesus Christ on that cross at Calvary. And when the devil rolled that wave of death over his life and rolled that sea of adversity over his life, you know what the devil tried to do? He tried to keep him down. But you know what Jesus did? He got up. He he got up, he got up, and he's become a living, breathing testimony that you can make it and you can get back up. You say, I'm a limping. Then be a limping, get her upper. You say, I'm divorced. Then be a divorce, get her upper. You say, I'm poor. Then you ain't got a lot to get up. You say, they left me. Then get up. You say the church split, then get up. You say nobody wants to go with me, get up. You say nobody cares, get up. You say they messed me over, get up. You say I can't make it, get up. You say they abandoned me, get up. You say my mind's not right, get up. You say I've lost it all, get up. You say God's not moving, get up, get up, get up. Stop laying down and get up and go on with Jesus Christ. My God, don't stay down. Prophets in Laodicea, we don't have time to stay down. Get up and move on with Christ. You say, every time I get up, the devil tries to knock me back down. Shouldn't that be a testimony of the kind of power and anointing God's put on the inside of you? If the devil's always fighting you, I wonder what God's put inside of you. My heavens. When our forefathers meet us in heaven, you know what they're going to do? They're going to slap us in the face. They ain't going to slap us in the face for changing the colors. They ain't going to slap us in the face for putting lights they ain't going to slap us in the face for doing pews or chairs or two services or five services. You know what they're going to slap us in the face over? For being spiritual babies. And letting the devil tear our nerves up. Get up. Get up. Number two, you know what else a prophet in Laodicea does? They don't just refuse to stay down, but they are absolutely adamant that they're going to lift up a preeminent Christ. They refuse to stay down, but they also are determined to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Look back, if you will, in the verse we read in verse number 14. I want you to watch what John says in verse 14. He says in verse number 14, he says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write. Now, honey, these were a messed up group of people. These were a messed up group of people. These were a messed up group of people. Do you know what most preachers today, if they got around a messed up group of people, would have first said? They'd have first said something like, you're a messed up group of people. But I want you to watch what John said. First and foremost, these things saith the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. You know what John said first and foremost? He said, before I show you your mess up, let me show you Jesus. Before I show you where you need to change, let me show you Jesus. Before I show you how you've fallen out, let me show you the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what this generation needs to hear about? They don't need to hear about more checkbooks. They don't need to hear about more marriage sermons. They don't need to hear about how to better raise this and how to better grow that. They need to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. The people of God need to hear about the shepherd. The people of God need to hear about Christ. We need to preach. Jesus. You say, what do I say to my loved ones? Preach Jesus. What do you say to my co-workers? Preach Jesus. What do I say to people that go to contemporary church or a modern church or a dead church? Don't talk about their church. Talk about Jesus. Lift up Jesus because if they're a sheep of God, the shepherd will draw them to himself. Just teach Jesus, preach Jesus, speak Jesus, pray Jesus, love Jesus. You say, why? What's all this Jesus talk? I don't understand all this Jesus talk. I'll tell you all this Jesus talk. Jesus is all that I need. He's everything I've got to have. He is my life. He is my hope. He is everything that I need in this world. Everything I need from one to a zillion, Jesus is that. Everything I need from A to Z, Jesus is that. A, you say, I don't believe you. Let me go. Go down the alphabet. A, he is my advocate. B, he is my bread. C, he is my cornerstone. D, he is my deliverer. E, he is everlasting. F, he is faithful. G, he is good. H, he is holy. I, he is incredible. J, he is just. K, he is the king. L, he is the light. M, he is the Messiah. N, he is the Nazarene. O, he is omnipotent. P, he is the Passover. Q, he is the quenching spirit. R, he is the rose of Sharon. S, he is the son of God. P, he is the truth of God. V, U, he is the unspeakable joy of God. V, he is the victory. W, he is the way. X, he is the expressed image of God. Y, he is the yoke of heaven. And Z, he's the zeal of the Lord. A to Z, he's all I need. And he's all you need. He's all. People ask me all the time, how do you build a church? Preach Jesus. What does a choir sing about? Jesus. You say, why Jesus? Because Jesus is the only thing that unites sheep. It's the only thing. Our money won't unite us. Our backgrounds won't unite us. But he will. Christ will. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What do I tell people at my work? What do I tell people at my job? Just tell them what Jesus has done for you. What do I say when I go to my family reunion? Just tell them what Jesus has done for you. What do I do to my husband? He don't want to come to church. If you'll just brag about Jesus, he'll either convert or be so uncomfortable. I don't know what to tell you, but I promise you this. He'll never be able to deny that he heard the gospel. What do I say to my wife, Jesus? What do I say to my kids, Jesus? Beloved, prophets at Laodicea lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. But number three, a prophet at Laodicea they see the spiritual need. 
They always point to the spiritual need. You say, what, what do you mean? Well, I want you to notice back in verse number, in verse number 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing. And you know not that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now, honey, I'm just going to be straight with you. We Baptists have got some big problems. You say, what's our biggest problem? We focus a whole lot on the exterior. If somebody's got money, they must be spiritual. If somebody wears a suit and tie, they must be spiritual. If somebody wears a dress and no pants, they must be real spiritual. If somebody doesn't go here, doesn't do that, they must be real spiritual. Listen to me now. The exterior is but just a small page in a big story. Yeah. You see these people that come into Laodicea and the Bible says in John chapter or Revelation chapter 3 verse number 17, we're rich and increased. Do you know how they got rich in Laodicea? You know what the big industry was at Laodicea? It was the wool industry. Where does wool come from? Sheep. What is Jesus a type of? He's a shepherd. John said, Behold the Lamb. Here was the point. They knew Jesus commercially, but they did not know Jesus spiritually. Beloved, don't be shocked. Listen, this is the point. Don't be shocked when you look around and see a big church. That doesn't make it a spiritual church. And when you look around and see a small preacher that's got five people and he's up there yelling and stamping and screaming, saying, we are here to the old time way, that don't make him right either. You're going to have to have discernment. I heard a preacher say one time, I wish I could remember what he said. Who it was that said it? It's what he said. He said, the biggest need in the Laodicean church age is discernment. Discernment. Being able to look beyond the exterior and see the spiritual. You say, where do you get that? The Lord Jesus goes into a town and there's a man that comes and he comes to him and he's naked and he's a Gentile and he's unclean and this man is vile. You know what Jesus says? What's your name? But he didn't say a word. The demon spoke and said, We are legion. You know what Jesus did? He looked beyond the man into the soul. You know what you're going to have to do in this Laodicea and church age? You're going to have to look beyond the surface into the heart. There's going to be people in this day that don't look like you, but love God. And there's going to be people in this age that look just like you, but don't know God. There are big churches that have thousands of people, but that doesn't mean Jesus is there. And then there'll be some dead little church somewhere. Ain't nobody there. And they're going to say, we're right. Just because they say it, you've got to discern. There's going to be people at your work, and this is what they're going to say. They're going to say, I'm a Christian. What would you do Saturday? (laughs) What didn't I do Saturday? Yeah. You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to discern. And then there are people in this congregation right now who will never sing, never preach, but you love God more than any of us in here. You know how I'm learning that? Because I'm learning to discern. I told this to the church Wednesday night. I'll tell it again. Austin, come over here, son. Sing something for me. I told this to the church Wednesday night. We were given the uh, 
we were given the opportunity to buy one of the houses that we voted on several years to buy. We, we bought it last Thursday, and the house and the piece of land, long story short, we were able to buy it. And Right before that, we were given an opportunity to go look at some land. And we had a decision to make. Were we going to let that go? Let that, just kind of let that fly and take a chance on the land? Maybe working out? Maybe not working out? No idea. And I don't know why God does it. Don't you just wish God would let you make a decision and say, all right, you got a year and a half to think about it. <laughs> Anybody else wish God would do it like that? Yeah, he don't do it like that. The lady said, you got this afternoon to let me know. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, okay, okay, okay. I get to praying. I get to thinking. Do we take it? Do we say no? We take a chance? And I know it's real easy sitting there, but y'all don't have to answer to 500 people. Yo quiero Taco Bell do. I'm sitting there thinking, God, what do I do? God, what do I do? That's a good opportunity. But this, maybe. And I said, Lord, show me what to do. And all I could think in that car was this. Lord, I told you I would walk through open doors. God, I can't walk through doors that aren't open. So all I can do is walk through open doors. So called the lady back. I said, we'll take it. We'll buy it. When you want to close? She said, we'll close Wednesday. Signed it. We're done. It's over. It's through. That was on one Friday. And I'm sitting here thinking, the devil just beat your brains out over this thing. Boy, you made a mistake. Boy, you made a mistake. You bitten off. You made a mistake. We got a phone call a day after that. The devil beat my brains out. The man called, and this is what he said. He said, well, we've decided not to even sell that land right now. Appreciate the phone call. And hung up. Now, I wish I could tell y'all that I was so super spiritual that I knew the future. Can I tell you what I learned to do? I've learned to discern. And some of you right now, the reason you're so battling is because you're trying to pull from this direction and this direction. And you're going to have to look beyond the surface in these days and see the truth. But eyes can only see what God opens them up to. That's all you can do. Child of God, in this last day, in these days of apostasy, these days of apathy, these days of absolute abomination, we need people that are going to get back up. Some of you right now, you've been down too long. It's time to get back up. It's time to get back going. You've been down, you let the devil have too many weeks, months, and years. It's time to get back up. Some of you need to say, Lord, I want to lift up Jesus. You'll give me an opportunity this week, I'll lift up Christ. And then some of you tonight need to say, Lord, and this is for the deep Christian, Lord, give me ears to hear, give me eyes to see, and give me a heart to know the difference. That's discernment. Thank you for watching this broadcast of Unspeakable Joy with Pastor Tyler Galden. Our prayer is that you have been challenged and changed by the power of God's Word. Unspeakable Joy is only able to broadcast on this station through the regular prayers and financial support of people just like you. We thank you for your faithful support. For more information, visit us online. To request the full sermon from this broadcast, call us at 833-FULL-JOY or write us at Unspeakable Joy. P.O. Box 4558, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27404. 
All of our sermons and other resources are available online. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need, that you may rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory.